Well, what you're looking at here is the makings of a tracer attachment for my lathe. And uh, it's pretty simple. So I'm going to show you how this thing is going to close the loop around my cross slide. Actually, it's going to be on the compound. And then we will be able to trace things. So what I've got here is a motor, two slide pots, and a Polulu JRK21V3 controller. And I have set it up in voltage feedback mode. So if I move this pot like it was a tracer on a template, the motor will start to turn. And if this pot is connected to where the slide is for feedback, the motor will stop when it gets positioned. It goes both ways. So what this wants to do is always make these two pots equal. So if this is connected to a stylus that's tracing a pattern, it will move the motor until they both move to the same position. Alright, so that's a basic feedback system. I'm going to show you how I hook this up to my lathe. It's going to be jury-rigged at first, and then once I prove the concept, I'll wire it in. Um, I can't claim all the, ex all the uh, credit for this invention because, I sorry, what gave me the idea to do this is a Tom Lipton video where he was making a tracing, but he was using a dial indicator and he was acting as the feedback circuit where he, you know, wherever the template told him to go, he would turn the crank manually to do it. And he was able to keep it, you know, within a few thousandths, maybe five thousandths. And this was for his baby bullet vice build that he's doing. Well, I looked at that and I said, you know, he's basically acting like a feedback controller. He watches the needle and he moves the, moves the slide so that it, always tries to zero. Well that's exactly what this does. Except it's probably, hate to say it Tom, going to be much more accurate. <laughs> so um, you know, hook this up in the lathe and uh, see how it goes now. I'm going to use my uh, cross, my compound tapered driving attachment motor because that's already geared up and ready to go. So I'll just have a bunch of wires hanging out of that and then I'll uh, attach the pot somehow to the lathe, probably with something as horrible as hot melt glue. But it's just for testing. Once I get it so it works, I'll buy some better pots. These pots here, I think, are only about 25 millimeters end to end, which you know only gives you about an inch of tracing ability. Um, if this thing does work, you know, as I think it's going to, and I get all the feedback right, um, I don't know if you've seen this Palulu uh, configurator here, but uh, this uh, allows me, I can't do this through the camera, sorry, here's the PID, so you can adjust the loop parameters, uh, feedback scaling, motor parameters, input scaling and you talk to that through a USB connector but once you uh, write those parameters once you write those parameters to the uh, to the microcontroller it's there forever so um, 
what I'll probably end up doing is having this all haywired on the lathe and um, have my laptop out there and tune the, 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 the parameters um, with the computer and once I get the PID loop tuned and all the inputs and outputs scale correctly then I can disconnect the computer and this will function just as a tracing attachment. Okay, so I've done this a little differently here to kind of illustrate the point a little better but um, I've replaced the linear pot that will actually be in the system with a 10 turn pot and the reason I've done this is this would represent the motor turning the lead screw and getting feedback off the pot directly through a 10 to 1 ratio and a 10 to 1 ratio is what my lead screw is if I turn it in one turn it moves in a hundred thousandths so this represents one inch of travel on the compound and this uh, linear pot will be connected up to the stylus the traces on the pattern so you can see what happens here if I move the pot, let me get it in frame here, if I move the pot I can't move this pot smoothly enough that a pattern would but you can kind of get the idea that it's servoing on the position the big step it would never have to move that fast in real life as long as you kept the the feeds on the, on the uh, apron reasonable Okay, so let me turn the camera around and show you the error plot of that. Okay, so this is the error that the controller sees. Now, when I move this pot, you'll see a big error be generated quick, and then as it slews to that new position, the error will minimize to zero. Watch. So for slow movements you would have, you know, pretty much zero ever error because the motor would be tracking the pot like this. And then for a big transition, you know, you'd never want to see big errors like this because these would be errors in your, you know, from your pattern to your work and they're velocity based. As long as you kept everything slow enough, the error is reasonably small. I mean, we're looking at uh you know, my full scale on this error plot is 4,096. You know, that could be the maximum. Now, I've got this thing set up to plus or minus 1,000 counts. So it's kind of higher sensitivity than you normally would see here. Like if I come over here and set this error level to 100. Now you can see the sensitivity is much higher. So now we're talking, you know, it's a hundred counts full scale. So what's that? Ten counts maybe? Not even? Um, that's not even going to move the motor. But you can see it doesn't overshoot, so the tool won't dig. And it gets there pretty damn quick. And 
And this is pretty neat because you can look at all sorts of things here. Here's the target. Here's the feedback. Okay, so the next time you'll see this, it will be clued to my lathe, and then we're going to have some real fun. Okay, today we're going to hook this up to the lathe. So to make things easy, what I did was I took a crappy old dial indicator that I had that was no damn good, and I ripped all the guts out of it, and put a real heavy spring in it. Just for comparison, that's what's usually in it. Very light spring. This one is substantially stronger, right there. And then I hot melt glued my slider pot to the now very stiff stylus and instant encoder. So I have another one here, and I'm going to hook up to the side of the, the uh, thing again with, with hot milk glue. And uh, I left the electronics hanging out here, so if I need to I can hook up the USB to it and adjust the servo parameters. And uh, if everything goes well, uh, hopefully we're going to be able to... Uh, Cut something really cool here, so stand by. All right, I get the kludge of the world going here, but the loop is closed. Um, try to show you what I did. There's the there's one pot. It's hot melt glued across the gap in the compound. When I push this. There it is. All right. So I'm going to kind of solidify this thing a little and do some uh, servo tuning and uh, calibrate it. It's not calibrated yet. And then uh, I'm going to try to cut some metal with this kludge. Hang on. Okay, I figured out what was going on here. There is a slight scaling error because the compound is at an angle. And the reason it's at an angle is because on this lathe, I'll show you. On this lathe, if I turn this to 90 degrees, these wheels hit. So I have to have it offset by, I mean, I don't know what it is now. It's probably like 10 degrees. Um, but I can account for that in software. All I have to do is figure out the sign of the angle and then multiply the gains out, and it will work. Right now, it's doing about 85% of the size. So this works pretty good. Wish I could show you all this in one shot here. Alright, got a piece of Delrin in here. Let's see what happens.
Kind of looks like a ball. Not too bad for a couple hours worth of work and some junk out of a little stereo, huh? I think I need a little more servo work. We'll be good here. I mean, in all fairness, if you look at this, some of those lines are in here. So uh, I think it followed it pretty good. Let's see. There you go. Look at that edge right there. That was easy.